the whole kind of story of technology as it's told in Marx's Capital is very much about the coercive laws of competition force individual capitalists constantly to search out new technologies in order to gain technological advantage in profit making. So that is, if you like, uh, the story. And in Marx's time, you might say that was an adequate kind of story to tell. Um, I've often thought to myself, in our times, that's not quite enough. There's another form of technological dynamism, which is very, very important, and which is, in some respects, perhaps even outgrown uh, the sort of nature of capital uh, technological dynamism that we've already described. This form of, uh, of technological change is uh, uh, problematic for one very significant reason, and that is that in this case, we're not looking at the coercive laws of competition uh, between uh, capitals. We're looking at the coercive laws of competition between states. In other words, instead of thinking about rivalries between firms, we talk about rivalries between states. Now, when did rivalries between states start to pick up? In 1648, there was something called the Treaty of Westphalia, which in Western Europe set up a situation where there was an agreement amongst everybody to uh, accept the sovereignty of the state and to accept the given borders of the state. So the Treaty of Westphalia basically said to all the European powers, OK, we've now got a fixed set of states. We all should acknowledge the sovereignty of that state and we should also respect the boundaries of that state. Now you can see uh, this is a very important, significant uh, situation right now because we have a country, Russia, which is not respecting uh, the borders of uh, Ukraine and which is not respecting the sovereignty of Ukraine. It is in violation, in a sense, of the Treaty of Westphalia. But here is something terribly important theoretically, which is to what degree is... Uh, competition between states somehow or other related, tightly related, to the competition between, between capitalists? And to what degree does the technological change, which comes about through the, the, through the competition between states, to what degree does that involve major, major forms of technological reconfiguration? And what is it that the relationship of that to the whole dynamics of, of capitalist uh, development. Now, there is a, a school of thought that says that the origin of capitalism depended upon an, the creation of an interstate system, that many of the features of capitalism were widespread around the world. You can find them in imperial China, you can find them in Ottoman uh, Empire, you can find them in the Mughal Empire and so on. But you never got capitalism coming out of it because capitalism was not able to actually develop in the way it did. The only place in which it could develop in the way it did was where there was a vibrant interstate system. And that therefore, the interstate system in Western Europe was, if you like, the, the, the birthplace uh, of capitalism as we now know it. And it was this interstate system where interstate co coercion and, and, uh, and competition uh, was a very important feature. Now, what were they competing about? Well, they were competing about, of course, wealth and power. Uh, and to some degree, right to this day, we find the state uh, very much involved in trying to support high tech in such a way that... Uh, uh, the United States maintains its technological advantage in, uh, in artificial intelligence or in other areas. Therefore, technological advantage is terribly important to the relative uh, wealth, well-being of, of the states themselves. So, yes, uh, what we will find is the, uh, the support of private industry and state support of private industry. So if you take something like pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceutical industry in this country rests very much upon money which is channeled to them from the states through uh, the National Institute of Health. And therefore, the state is actually subsidizing technological development because it knows that if you have major drug companies which are in your midst, 
uh, then uh, you have a technological advantage as a country in terms of trading with the rest of the world. So, yes, indeed, there is a direct way in which the state becomes involved in support of various forms of corporate capitalism. And we've seen, of course, those forms of cor corporate capitalism in agriculture. We've seen them in the United States. We've seen them in agriculture. We've seen them in energy. We've seen them in pharmaceuticals and, 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 and so on. So the state is heavily, heavily involved. And if you're a poor state, you can't, you can't do that. It's only a very rich state that can afford enough money to maintain its technological advantage. And technological advantage means that you get a super amount of uh, a surplus value flowing in to your country. So technological advantage is terribly important to the relative well-being of the population of the United States and the well-being of the, of the corporations that uh, work here within the United States. So, so technological advantage then is something which the state is, is obviously involved in.